Welcome to the Living the Dream Podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. achieve, achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball Podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, we're going to be talking about telehealth medicine, as I am joined by entrepreneur and the founder and CEO of Call On Doc, TJ Ocean. TJ took this company within a decade from a small company to a multi-million dollar national company, and it has transformed access to health care across all 50 states in the United States, and he, he is on the forefront of the telehealth revolution. So we're going to be talking to him and about everything that he's up to. So TJ, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to uh, share my story and um, provide education and my story with your audience. Thank you for having me again, Mr. Cordes Jackson. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. I'm uh, um, my name is TJ Oshun. Uh, the full name is Adetunji Oshun. I'm a Nigerian immigrant. Uh, I've been in the U.S. I feel like I'm American because I've been here over 25 years. Um, like I said, I went to medical school in New York. I live in New York, um, and I started, you know, as you know, from a humble beginning from Nigeria, immigrated to the U.S. and I started um, the telemedicine company in a local clinic in Dallas, Texas. And um, I, I saw the need of expanding healthcare, and that's how I pivoted to telemedicine. Yeah, as you know, most clinics open nine to five, and I needed. I saw the need for expanding the access to care and, and making it accessible to to uh, patients all over the U.S. And that's how I started in in Texas, and from there we saw the value in, in, in caring for patients all over the U.S. And that's how we started a telemedicine practice, a component of the clinic. And since then, we've been able to grow. And this is what was pre-COVID, which was very hard then. It was very hard to understand or, or articulate the need for telemedicine virtually pre-COVID. So we had to go through the uh, licensing and valuation, you know, validation of the need for telemedicine. And um, unfortunately, you know, COVID happened and that facilitated the need for telemedicine. And since then, um, being forefront of telemedicine, we're able to scale to, you know, from Texas to all 50 states of the United States. And here we are now, fast forward 2024, we're able to provide, you know, healthcare and access to medical care to to uh, patients all over the states in the United States. Um, so that's that's where we are now in a nutshell. And like I said, I'm, I'm an immigrant and just try to help, you know, my community and the United States as a whole. So for those who might not be familiar with tele- telemedicine, explain what telemedicine is. Absolutely, I, I'm, 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 I'm glad you asked that question. Telemedicine, Telemedicine is essentially digital health, basically accessing healthcare in a digital space. Whatever healthcare you need in a digital space, it could be your primary care doctor, it could be your labs, it could be mental health, anything anything you need from a medical space in a digital world. You know, as you know, you know everything is moving you know digitally now, where you can buy anything on Amazon. You don't necessarily have to go in stores to seek whatever you need. So the same thing in healthcare. It's the same things that you can do digitally. I do understand the need for in-person evaluation, but the same things that can be clinically evaluated online. For instance, if you have an abnormal lab or you have, let's say, an STD diagnosis from your doctor, your doctor is not available on on the, over the weekend, and you need to see a doctor in uh, offline. That's where telemedicine comes in. So it's essentially engaging with a doctor online for a medical need. That's what telemedicine means. It means a technology virtually. 
So what made you see the need for telemedicine uh, way before, you know, it became really popular, like, say, after COVID? So, like I mentioned, I, I uh, started a clinic with my business partner in Texas, you know, specifically a little community called Irving, Dallas, Texas. Uh, it was a small clinic that, that was failing that I bought, and I wanted to transform the clinic from a non a profitable clinic to a profitable clinic. And I was able to do that within six months. It was a, a, a clinic that was filling that I bought uh, with my partner and we're able to make it profitable. You know, the entrepreneur in me wanted to build a clinic. I'm a, I'm a tech guy. I, I, I love building a, a, any business from ground up to a more profitable clinic or practice or business. But we were profitable. But then I saw that... Um, the rate of no-show at the clinic was significantly high, and it didn't make sense to me. You know, the clinic, clinic plateaued at some point, and I wanted to build it more outside of the urban area. And the only way you could do that is actually reaching out to the patient, going to visit them. So I thought about actually visiting patients at home, but I figured out that wasn't sustainable. I couldn't travel you know, hours to visit patient in, in two miles, three miles. So I'm like, okay, the, the easiest way is actually the patient coming to me at some point. So that I figure out what about a phone call or internet connection somehow where I can see more patients without that travel. That was how I developed the concept of telemedicine. Again, this is about eight years, you know, ago before telemedicine was a thing, before technology was a thing. That's how, that's how we started, where I just wanted to reach out more to more patients, help more patients, and build my, my community of servicing more patients. And it worked out then, so I was able to expand outside of Irving, Texas, was able to go into other pockets of Texas and um, go outside of Texas. Then two, three years later, COVID hit, and I was able to rapidly expand to all 50 states of, uh, of the United States. By that time, I had that infrastructure in place. I had the doctors in place to be able to grow the practice. So that was the motivation. It was out of just expanding the business and expanding the, the, the access of uh, medical care to patients. Well, I, I know you kind of touched on it before, but, but talk about some of the regulatory challenges that you, that you faced trying to get your telemedicine company up and running and, and how you overcame them? Right. That's a very, very good question. That was the, one of the biggest challenges we, we had. Like I said, we, we launched pre-COVID so there weren't any guidelines, any, any protocols or regulations to follow. So I, I remember I had to call the medical board, you know, before I even started. And I called the uh, Texas Medical Board. And I, and I asked if it, was, if it was okay to uh, see patients virtually. It sounds bizarre now, but back then it was it was um, nerve-wracking to see patients virtually or over the phone. So I called them and I asked if it was okay to, uh, to uh, consult my patients virtually. And the answer was like, we've never done this before. As long as you establish medical necessity, and document that it was necessary to, to see patients, then we should be fine. There's no law against or for it. I'm like, absolutely fine. That's all I needed. Can you just uh, send me an email? You know, it was so busy. I actually have that email in my inbox right now supporting that, um, that initiative back then. So that's all I needed to just be able to, um, you know, build a foundation off of the, and, and that could have made or or disrupted the business concept that I have because it only took a, a, a customer service to tell me it was okay to proceed. If she had said otherwise that you cannot do this, maybe this concept of telemedicine would have been a no-no, but she gave me the go ahead and told me, as long as you, you know, taking care of patient and you had a good faith and you actually documented that you actually establishing medical necessity, you should be good to go. So that was one of the uh, initial, you know, hurdles that we have. And we still continue to have the issue till today in the sense that the states, each because we're in 50 states, 
each state have their own uh, guidelines, rules, and regulations. So we, we actually had to you know, create a department to be on top of um, these rules and regulations because it changes all the time. There's certain states that you have to follow certain guidelines. The, uh, California is a more flexible state. And you have a state like um, North Carolina that is very, very stringent in terms of how they approach telemedicine. So we have to stay on top of this, which is kind of discouraging for a smaller company that don't have the resource to, uh, to follow up. But thank goodness we were on top of it. So we have the resource to do this. But again, telemedicine is about access. You want clinics and doctors to be able to access and develop their own telemedicine platform. But when you have these regulatory restrictions, it kind of discourages um, doctors from uh, participating. Okay, everybody, it's Michael E. Cullen II. And I'm Sesame Encarta from the All Too Real 2 podcast. We're passionate about movies, TV, and pretty much all things pop culture. Dive into the chaos of failed sitcoms, direct-to-video sequels, and the quirky realms of cinema and TV. Join us every Thursday for your dose of All Too Real 2 entertainment. We'll guide you through debates like whether Howard the Duck qualifies as a superhero. Ponder if Larry the Cable Guy could be the new rock or Schwarzenegger. Discover if some shows and movies should have stayed in the cutting room. Ever heard of a sitcom featuring that dictator with the funny mustache? Well, we watched it. We're dedicated to unraveling the peculiarities of pop culture, sometimes with awesome guests. So, if you're into the eccentric world of pop culture, listen and subscribe to All Too Real 2. Available wherever you find podcasts and on Age of Radio. Well, how have you used emerging tech trends to improve patient care at Cal- Call on Doc? Right. So, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm a, I'm a tech company versus a medical company. Um, I have a team of um, technicians, software engineers, IT. Um, we constantly optimize the need for or uh, optimize our platform. So, I, and I'm not sure if I mentioned this, we have a custom built technology platform that offers this um, easy access to medical care to patients, right? So what we try to do is how can we eliminate the pain points patients are having from the current practices that they have experience they have with the doctors or, or limitations doctors have with their patients? How can we eliminate those pain points and use technology to facilitate that. So we've implemented a lot of artificial intelligence to to eliminate a necessary intake process so the access to doctors can be minimized, right? So you have easy access to a booking appointment, you have easy access to your prescription refills, you have easy access to connecting with a doctor instantly or like most telemedicine com- companies, you can actually see a doctor within 15 minutes, anytime, 24 seven. If you need your prescription before your travel or you get out of work, you need to go home before you get to your kid, you need to get your prescription within 15 minutes, you can access our platform and we can get it done with a combination of artif- artificial intelligence and a real time doctor to write a prescription and send it to any pharmacy that you need in the United States. That's how we have been able to leverage technology, making the process super easy, straight to the point, and get access to the doctor. Now, what we don't do is we don't do everything, right? We understand the need for in-person doctor. So when, when this is where artificial intelligence comes in place, when you have symptoms that are complicated, severe, on in need in person visit, we refer you to a doctor nearby or to the emergency room. But when you do qualify to for telemedicine, you will be connected with a doctor that will be able to write your prescription and send it to your pharmacy instantly. And if if, if for for whatever reason we are not able to treat you, you will be refunded, and uh, so you can see a doctor in person. So our service is if we cannot treat you, you'll get refund of your fee, and it's a pay as you go 
service, no subscription. That's absolute. We have a subscription service for our long-term patients, but it's not mandatory. Okay, so so you got your call on doc, and, and you have you're a seasoned entrepreneur. You, you've you've ran a, even ran a barber shop. So tell us what lessons you've learned about business resiliency and adaptability through your entrepreneur entrepreneurial journey. Absolutely. That's another very good question. You know, like any business man, you have to start somewhere and build your, um, what I call street credibility um, from somewhere and grow, grow from there. Uh, my journey started with uh, just buying up my uh, local barbershop that was failing at that time. And uh, I invested some capital. It couldn't afford you know, the basic necessity. I have no idea on how to run barbershop by that time. So I bought, I bought the barbershop. I bought him out of his business. And, and um, you know, for the first two years, it was not profitable, right? But then I, I built resilience and I was able to build the company to a more profitable um, company at that time. But I learned a lot from it. I learned because that was my first business. You know, that taught me on how to build a website, taught me how to actually register a license, you know, the barbers at that time, you know, that was sort of like a template for where I'm at now because it was a complicated process, even though it seemed like a barbershop, but you have to go through the Texas. It was in Texas back then. You have to go through the Texas licensing board. You have to, you have to manage not necessarily just the, um, the uh, customers, you have to manage the barbers as well. So that was the blueprint for me to learn the process of man management. I exited the company at that time and I went back to school um, to learn about medicine. And when I graduated, I knew I couldn't be uh, a medical provider for too long working for a hospital system. I had to build my own uh, practice. So after three years of uh, being a hospitalist at UT Southwestern, I pivoted and started my own small clinic. But that experience from a barbershop and other businesses that I've developed over or, or ran over time, I was able to use that experience to be able to confidently build um, a successful practice. And, um, and I, I, uh, I, I, I encourage everyone to start any business that you want, even though it failed or it fails, you would have learned something from it, right? You, it, it, not all business will be successful from get-go. Not a business will be able to be, make you a millionaire, but you will learn some business concept from it. It will build your street credibility, credibility and stamina to be able to endure you to – your end goal. So I encourage your listeners to actually, whatever they're passionate about, to just go for it, start it. Don't invest too much capital that you're not willing to to uh, lose and just go for it and pivot. If you feel like it's not working, pivot to something else, to a different career or to a different business and, and ramp up from that. If that fails, it's okay. You can pivot. You will know within three, four months, but if you don't execute, you will not know. Don't be afraid to get in, execute, get out. Get in, execute, get out. That's my philosophy. It's worked for me. I've tried multiple businesses, uh, and I'm continuing to test the water. Even as I am now, even when I have a company that's successful, the couple of business ventures that I still get get into that are not successful, I try for a couple of months. I, I enter the business, I execute, and get out if it's not working. That's been my, my success story, and it's worked for me so far. So what are the most significant impacts when it comes to telemedicine and patient outcome, and, and how are you guys at Call on Doc tracking these results? So we, we've had a uh, tremendous experience, um, results in terms of patient outcome. Um, we've been able to save a lot of patients um, tremendous amount of money in terms of um, uh, cost of, cost of uh, access to medicine. So traditionally, if you if you had a cold um, after 9 p.m., you would go to the ER or 
e ER was the option because some 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 urgent care centers are not even open. So we've been able to save a lot of patients, uh, a lot of money for basic access to healthcare. So you don't have to go to the ER or or even suffer a significant health deficit from zero access to medical care. We have same patients that need basic health over the weekend. When the doctors are closed, they come to us and tell us, hey, my doctor is open, is closed over the weekend. Can you guys refill my medication? Otherwise, I'm going to die from hypertensive urgency. So we've been able to save a lot of patients in terms of in the, 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 the expenses of uh, ER visits or just their life, period. You know, we've been able to save. And if you can read our testimony also, how we've been able to impact uh, patient outcome. So that's the basic fundam- fundamental of what we've been able to do in terms of, you know, patient impact, cost savings, life, and impact in the outcome of patient care. Uh, and we continue to strive, strive doing that, u- utilizing technology to improve patients' life. Um, we we plan to continue to collaborate with um, our patients' primary care doctors. We don't want to operate in isolation. We want to work in collaboration with patients, doctors, where we exchange um, patient records when the patients are not able to view or see their doctors in person, they come to us. When they can't see their doctor, they go to the doctor and we just exchange uh, information and collaborate together to foster patient um, you know, healthcare outcome. Well, what future innovations in in the telemedicine industry are you guys more ex, more excited about, and how do you plan to implement them when they become available? Right, I know. I know the story is all about AI. I'm, I'm a strong believer in artificial intelligence. Um, my goal is to make healthcare even more accessible, even though you have telemedicine now. A lot of people and folks are still not able to access telemedicine. Um, even though we charge $40 per visit, it's still unaffordable to certain people. And certain patients of, of folks, especially in the rural folks, don't have access to the internet. So they don't have access to uh, telemedicine. And you have the um, older demographic that are not technological savvy, they're not able to access uh, telemedicine because their their access to uh, internet. They're not able to access that. So we we utilizing AI to expand the care for for those patients that are not able to access the current care, where you can access us by just a simple phone call, you know, or you need emergency access, you can just call our nurse line and we can direct you to a doctor or the ER. So we're using a lot of uh, back-end technology to actually reach out to patients and save more lives. AI is huge. There's tons of ways you can actually utilize it from you know, just easy access to a doctor to more of a personalization where, okay, I, I don't have access to a doctor. Can I speak with a, te- a technology that can help me navigate my pain point without accessing a real-time doctor and you can have a real-time real interaction with a an artificial intelligent individual that can give you as much information as you need as a doctor would. So that's where we invest in a lot of um, research. How can we not necessarily replace a doctor, but actually supplement a doctor for those folks that don't have access to a doctor at a zero cost. You know, where, okay, I'm home, I'm a 45-year-old or 60-year-old patient, zero access to the internet, but I need medical care, medical care right now. Who can I call? Who can walk me through if I need to go to the ER, if I need to go to a doctor, if I need to take my medication, how can I take my blood pressure medication you have that instant access to a technologically savvy individual. That's what we're working on now. Well, what advice would you give somebody l- looking to jump into the tele telemedicine space? That's a very, very tough question. Uh, 
And, and the reason why I say that is the space is very, 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 very um, saturated, to say the least. Um, you have a lot of players that have been in the telemedicine space for a long time. So if you're not willing to sort of ride the wave or understand the business concept, I'll say don't do it as a business, but it does not necessarily mean you cannot offer your existing patient telemedicine as an option. But, you know, but this is why, you know, we come in, you know, to offer our software as a service plan. We have a SaaS also. We have a D2C plan, which is direct to consumer, but we have a technology. If, if you're trying to initiate a telemedicine company, you can um, sign up for our software where we can power all your backend. You don't necessarily have to build the technology from ground up. We have a software option where you can just build in. We have the doctors that will power it your service, we have the technology that will power this. You don't necessarily have to do this. However, if you if you have the appetite to um, go for it, I'll say go for it, but we have the support for you. You know, if you want to go in a space, again, it's a very, very competitive space as any uh, medical space as well as, as all. So if you don't have the appetite for that hustle, I'll say stay away from me, but if you have to, I'll, I'll say don't build the technology back, you know, from ground up using existing tele telemedicine platform like ours or any of the other platforms out there. Implement it so you can scale a little faster. And all you have to do is worry about marketing and we'll power the back end for you. Tell us about any upcoming projects that you and your company are working on that listeners need to be aware of. Absolutely. Um, we're working on a whole lot of things. I don't even know where to start. I feel like I'm I'm constantly working on um, a new technology, but the 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 biggest thing is just how we can utilize AI to optimize patient outcome. Um, one of the things we we're creating is um, a virtual clinic space where you can actually have an interaction with a doctor, a virtual avatar doctor. You know where you can have a a real-time, passionate interaction, and, and it will be like a human interaction with that doctor in a virtual space. Now, the doctor will give you all the recommendations that you want. After the, the virtual doctor's recommendation, you can now choose to see a real person, a real doctor, or follow documentation. Most of the, most of the recommend, recommendation of that virtual doctor would be, um, would be evidence-based, and correct, but you do have additional help from a backup doctor if you want to see. And obviously, those are those are for patients that more take advanced. But if you want to go to traditional way of seeing an in-person doctor, you can always connect with us instantly with a push of a button. You can either choose a phone visit, video visit, a chat. If you're just a text person, where you can have a live interaction with a real-time doctor, you can do that. And one of the things also we're launching uh, in the next talk, we actually launched it, but it will be worldwide, is at-home lab kit testing where you can order at-home test, send your blood sample or urine sample back to us. We can diagnose you virtually, treat you, treat you virtually without leaving your home. You see, it, it's we have our lab in Texas, and you see a real-time doctor that actually helps diagnose, review your labs. All of this is all virtual. This is the future of medicine, where you can do everything from the comfort of your home, whether you're in a car, you have truck truck drivers that are constantly driving, zero access to uh, to be able to pull over and see a doctor and wait in the living room. And can you imagine if the next COVID hit? And it could be COVID, it could be any viral condition or viral uh, epidemic where no one had access to uh, healthcare and you're stuck at home. This is where we come in to make sure you have access to a doctor, uh, had access to your medications because we can deliver medications to your home. We had You have access to labs. You had access from, from the comfort of your home, you know, with the presence of COVID. We know what COVID, how COVID affected every one of us. 
this is where Colondac is to make sure it's affordable, accessible, and convenient. Okay. We'll throw out your website so listeners can check you out. Absolutely. So we have um, a website and an app. All you have to do is um, go to call on doc. Like you just call in the doc, C A L L O N D O C. Call on doc. You can download the app. If you, if you do a consultation through an app, there's an additional $5 off the already uh, affordable cost of $39.99. Again, our goal is to make sure, my goal is to make sure healthcare is affordable accessible. Affordable is really key for me because I came from a humble beginning and I want to make sure regardless of your income status, whether you're a wealthy person or struggling, you can actually access medical care through doctors. I've been able to utilize, you know, implement technology to have you connect with doctors anywhere from the, you know, in the United States. So you can go to callondoc.com or download the app. Even if you don't have access, if you don't need care right now, you can download the app. So it's readily available for you when you actually need medical service. So do you guys work with insurance providers or is it just subscription-based? Sure. So it's not subscription-based. It's pay-as-you-go. It's um, $39.99 per visit. We have a subscription service as well, which is optional you pay $15 every month to access the doctor anytime, any day. However, we have the $39.99 pay as you go service for, you know, this usually is beneficial for patients that don't have ongoing medical problems or chronic medical conditions. If you have, if you have a cold, you can just pay your $39.99, get your prescription within 15 minutes, call it a day. So we do not have, uh, we, our subscription service is not mandatory uh, and we have a pay-as-you-go service. Okay, we'll close this out with some final thoughts. Maybe if that was something I forgot to talk about that you would like to touch on or any final thoughts you have for the listeners. Well, I want to thank you again um, for, for having me on board. Um, it's always exciting to share my thoughts and my humble beginning with folks. Um you know, I, I, I always like to uh, leave you, you know, one aspect is on the business side, on the healthcare side. On the healthcare side, I um, encourage everyone to, to lead a healthy living. You know, always make sure you're exercising and eat healthy and healthy. Make sure you are, you know, you know, eating your vegetables, counting your calories, eating your proteins. And make sure you're you're on, you're you're on a low salt, low sugar diet, and exercise constantly. On the business side, if you're a business person, don't be afraid to join in. The rules of business is make sure is a business you can scale. Don't invest too much capital in the beginning, and just go for it. Be bold. If it doesn't work out, pivot. It's just as simple as that. You would have learned something from it. Pivot. Start. Don't invest too much capital. Visit. Pivot. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So go check out callondoc.com. All you entrepreneurs out there, if you know some entrepreneurs, please follow, rate, review, share this episode to as many people as possible. Jump on your favorite podcast app. Give us a follow. Check out the show. Share it. Review it. If you have any guests or suggestions, C. Jackson or Curtis Jackson. Curtis Jackson, 1978 at att.net is the place to send them. TJ, thank you for all that you do. Listeners, thank you for supporting the show. And TJ, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream. dream.